The woman in my images, she's not necessarily always the same woman, but I feel like it's kind of built a mythology within itself of the same little girl. So, you know, it's kind of me uh, romanticized in my own head. My name is Amy Rice, and I'm a mixed media artist, and this is my studio um, in the California building in Northeast Minneapolis. When I was growing up, my mother would write letters from my missing socks to me, and they would say, Dear Amy, I am so alone and sad in this world, and only you can reunite me with my soulmate. Please help me love your purple argyle sock. So um, it was this really whimsical thing, but it was coupled with this intense emotional burden. And I think a lot of my art ha kind of has that whimsical, nostalgic, um, homesick is, <laughs> is a word I often use to describe my work as well, that just that kind of feeling of, 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 of some longing, but also coupled with good memories, I guess. I like the idea of, of, of a closed system and, and things in jars and, and things in, encapsulated. I feel like that a lot of the imagery that I put in the jar are things I want to I wanna hold on to forever. The idea of the, the first day that I had Ella. I mean, when I'm on my deathbed, that would be one of the happiest days of my life. And I think, you know, just with my method being able to use old letters and old envelopes and, and you know, the original piece that I did used, I was really careful about using antique maps from where I got Ella and antique envelopes from the area that I got Ella. And it was important to me to put all that, those things together in that capsulated and that, you know, like a little, a little closed system forever. I have to show this off. I have boxes of, of antique letters that I've collected at antique sales and rummage sales and online through the years. And I, I use these, I pr sometimes I print on the envelopes, but on the inside are letters and I like to use those in, in the art that I make. Sometimes I like the words to, to incorporate into the piece and sometimes I want the words to just help play into the background. And so in that case, um, using finished letters would be, would work out good. I collect all sorts of old paper to, to paint and draw on them, but my favorite to come across are antique love letters. And then my favorite thing to do is to read them and, and appreciate them before, before I paint on them. And hopefully I do them the love justice. Like sometimes people rip the stamps off. I'm not so much interested in that one anymore. Or this, like they just rip their letters. So, you know, if you're a letter writer um, and you want somebody to make art out of your letter in 100 years, please open them carefully. I always start with a printmaking method you know, like a stencil is one type. And what I love about that is that it can always be different. Each time I spray the stencil out, it's different than the next one. So each piece of work is an original piece, even though the same element might repeat over and over again. This is my, my next stencil series. I just finished a show. I get to start a whole new body of work, and that's very exciting. I found this scrapbook, this 4-H scrapbook. It was at an antique sale. I grew up on a farm, and I think maybe it's because I'd been at the State Fair the day before. I just really romanticized this whole book. But this image here really stuck out to me. Um, and it says underneath it, she was afraid of her when it was only a baby, but this year it weighs 500 pounds and visitors found the two sleeping together before this picture was taken. So my next series of art is going to be from this book, this using this image and some other images in, in, the, um, in the books. So this is a GoCo printer. It's a toy from Japan. It was very popular in the, in the late 70s, early 80s in Japan. It's a self-contained um, 
screen printing machine. The GoCo printer burns the screen and prints all in one unit. So this screen has um, emulsion already on it. So I put that in here. So I'm using the same image as I did for the stencil. And I use bulbs that flash and burn the, the carbon-based drawing into the screen. This is fun. And I pick it up and hope, hope, hope it worked. It worked, I'm pretty sure it worked. And then that screen can make literally hundreds of, of GoCo prints uh, of, that, of that image. Um, in, the, in the same machine. So it's, a, it's really a pretty neat thing. But unfortunately, they, they no longer make the GoCo print machine. They don't make the ink. They don't make the screens or the bulbs. We hope for the best because they don't always, they don't always turn out the way I had hoped. Oh, it turned out pretty good. I knew that I would lose this little part of the image, which is fine, I'll just color it in. I did not anticipate losing that, but I, I like it, I'm happy with it, turned out good. I had been painting from my past for years and I made a shift a few years ago where I started painting my future or what I wanted my future to look like. I just, I, I envision a future where I have a house on a lake and a swamp paddle boat and I, I would like a camper trailer and that those have been showing up in my art a lot as well and um, big gardens and I, you know, I think I will have that. Minnesota Original is made possible by the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the Citizens of Minnesota.